Hey guys, welcome back to MuseThemes.com. My name is Steve Harris. We have a fantastic new widget for you today, something we've been working on for a while called Presentation Panels. So what this does is it allows you to create full height and full width compositions that you can scroll through and they act as though they're panels. So when I click on the next navigation item here on the right, you can see that the whole page transitions down. It's filling the browser really nicely, the full height and the full width. And I can even use my keyboard controls to keep scrolling down. So this widget has a ton of flexibility as well because we've built it using state buttons and the state buttons are used to kind of wrap all of this content together. So let me go ahead and jump into Muse and show you how to make something like we did in this demo here. So when I'm in Muse, uh, the, the main thing that I like to do when I work with this widget is I like to zoom way out. We're going to be using a long page and we're going to be creating some really kind of big content areas. And because the way state button works, it kind of sucks all of the content into it. So it can be actually kind of difficult to drop a state button on the page and then be constantly copying, pasting other things into it. So I just like to have a lot of room to work here. And the first thing I'll do to get started is let's just go into our library panel and we'll drag the presentation panels widget out on the page. So when I do that, you can see we have kind of three components to this widget. And let me just move these over off the canvas here for now. So this top one that has kind of a weird line at the top, it's rendering a little bit strange. We hit a bug in Muse for the kind of the page poster here, but basically this is the controller widget. So you can see we've got a really big panel with lots of setup options for things like the way it scrolls, navigation dots, slider arrows, animation settings, all of that. The next thing we have below is what we're calling the parent element panel. So this is where we'd create a big content section called a parent and in here we just apply graphic styles and kind of link them up. The next widget down below is really optional. You do not need to use this, but this is called a child panel. And the child panel allows you to create kind of a sub area of content within the bigger panel that can be aligned and centered vertically or centered horizontally. So what this allows you to do is it allows you to create sites like this one where when you scroll or sorry, rather when you shrink the browser window, the content is staying directly centered and you're not pinning it or anything like that. It's just, this is done using a child panel. Same thing on this that says float multiple elements. We've got elements in the right and left. You can see that when I shrink this down, this is staying in the right, this is staying in the left. And then when I expand it back up, they stay kind of pinned to where they are. And this is how the child panels work. But again, they're totally optional. Okay, so let's go ahead and set one of these up. So the way that I'm gonna do it for this demo is I'm just going to drag a state button out on the page just like that. It's in your kind of standard Muse library. I'm going to delete out the existing content in there and I'm just going to make it so it doesn't have round corners and it doesn't have any sort of rollover states because they're, no, they're not actually going to be buttons. These are just containers for our content. So once I've done that, then I'm just going to align this to the top left and I'm going to drag it across and create kind of a big content section just like that. Okay, done. Now for the next panel, I'm just going to copy this state button down and drop it below. Now this is where you may want to actually design your layout without the state buttons first and then drop these in later because if I had dropped that on top of this top one, they would have combined to create one big state button, which can be a little bit confusing. So for the second panel, I'm just going to set the background color to black, just like that. And so now we've got these two content areas. So for the first panel, I'm gonna go ahead and assign a graphic style to it. Let's call this panel one. And then for the second one, we'll do the same thing. We'll call that one panel two. Okay, perfect. So now that we've got a couple of panels set up, let's go ahead and dig into the options in this widget and let's get something else kind of rolling here. So I'm gonna leave the options panel here for now alone and I'm just going to use the parent panel where we can actually input these IDs. So for the parent panel we've got two parents set up right now. We've got panel one and panel two. So I'm going to just go ahead and fill in this first one. We need a unique panel ID. Let's call it panel one. A graphic style that that's linked up to. Well that's panel one as well. And then we have a pagination dot hover display title. I'll show you what these mean when we preview this in the browser. So for now we've got panel one and panel one. That's good. Next thing I'm gonna do is duplicate this little widget because we've got two parents in this. We've got a panel two as well. So let's call that panel two and panel two. And we want the pagination dot to read panel two. Okay, just like that. We're not even using this child panel widget for now. 
Okay, so now that we've got those two parent panels set up, let's go ahead and look in the controller widget and we'll just run through some settings really quick. So our transition type we can set between vertical scrolling and sliding or horizontal. And below that we have some options for looping. So obviously looping bottom would mean when you hit the bottom of the last panel, you're going to automatically scroll back up to the top. We can set auto scroll and things like that. So I'm going to leave this set at vertical and let's just preview this in the browser now. Okay, so you see that we've got kind of this gray screen, the gray panel. We've got these two nav dots on the right. And when I mouse over them, it says panel one and panel two. When I click on panel two, the whole page transitions and you can see that now we're on the black panel here. So that's as easy as the setup is. It's really simple kind of to get rolling, get a basic structure set up. Now we could also go in here and set the sliding. So this means it's going to scroll horizontally. And once we do that, we actually enable some options for creating navigation arrows rather than just those navigation dots. So if I preview this one in the browser, you can see that now we have these arrows and you can customize these to be anything you want. But now of course we have a horizontal transition. Okay, so let's go ahead and add some more kind of content in here. I've got this top panel and I'm just gonna add a background fill to it. I've just got this image here that we used in the demo and I'll put that in there like that and let's just scale it to fill and center it, okay? Now on the next panel, I'm just gonna drop in a block of text and I'll just call this panel two. And I'll just style the text up a little bit. Let's just go with white so we can see it. Okay, and let's just go ahead and bring up the size of this text a little bit, just something that looks better. Okay, and I'm gonna center it, and there. So now we can just move this text in kind of the center of the panel temporarily, and good. So now we've got a little more style to this, so when we preview it, it's gonna look a little bit better. So let's go through some of these controller options a little more thoroughly. We touched on the sliding and transition types. So now we've got navigation settings. We can enable keyboard navigation, which means, of course, you can kind of click through the panels using your keyboard. Now we can turn on or off the navigation dots that you saw on the side. So we can change with the navigation dots the position. So I'm gonna go back to scrolling, which is vertical here, and then we can change the position to right or left. If we were on sliding, we could change it to top or bottom. Now we've got placement from the edge, so this is like a padding control. We've got the navigation dot color, so right now it's set to orange, and we've got the opacity, so we've got it set at 0.5 or 50%. Now we've got the tooltip color. Now that's where it said panel one and panel two on the right side. I'll go back to the demo and show you here. So these uh, little options here on the pagination dots. And remember those were set up actually on the parent panels here where we just put in the pagination dot hover display title panel one. So we could go ahead and style those up. Right now the text size is 14. We could change this to we'll go Montserrat, just like that. Now we have the navigation arrows, which are actually grayed out right now because they're only available on the sliding panel or horizontal ones. So we won't bother working with those, but as you can see, you can actually set a custom graphic style for those arrows. So if you wanna use something completely custom, you can. After that, we've got our animation settings. So we have the typical easing controls. And then we've got an animation timing here, and this is of course in milliseconds. So it's at 700 right now. We could go to say 1000 to make it a little bit slower. Okay, and lastly, we have the header and footer settings. So this allows you to kind of pin a fixed header or a fixed footer, and again, these use a graphic style. So I'll just create something really quick and really basic. So if we were to just take a rectangle here, and I'm gonna draw it across the top of the browser, We'll set a black fill to that. Actually, let's some, set something a little different. Let's go with gray. We could put some text in there, for, but for the purpose of this demo, I'll just leave it empty. And let's create a graphic style based on that, and we'll call it header, just like that. Okay, so now on our controller panel, at the bottom here, it says enable fixed header and enable fixed footer. I'll shut the footer off for now, but we've got the header and the graphic style name of header. And then we can set some padding, which will actually pad kind of below this header where the content starts, but I want it to start right away, so we'll go zero. So let me preview this now, and what we should get is a fixed header, just like that, that gray area at the top. And then when I go to panel two, you can see that the panel scrolls underneath, and actually these text styles are different too because I styled those up. So this is looking really good and working really well. This widget is amazingly compatible and it's really stable. Okay, so that's about it for the controller panel here. I'm gonna delete out this header because I don't like the look of that. And now let's touch quickly on the child panels and what they do. So 
when I preview this one in the browser, you can see that panel two here, it's staying relatively centered, but you know, you can tell it's not centered vertically. It's not right in the middle. And when I shrink this down, you eventually hit the page size and it's actually kind of, it starts ending up kind of on the right side here. So that's where child panels come into play. So the way that we would do a child panel is we could drop another state button into this area. So I'm gonna just drop another state button in here like that. Let me delete out this content again. And I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger. Okay, like that move it behind that text. And I'm gonna again, delete the states on that button, okay. Okay, so now we've got this panel two text and you can see that just when I moved it there, it actually dropped itself into the state button. That's why those are such great containers. I'm gonna remove the background on this. And we could of course set a fill or something like that. But for now, we've just got some text and let's just create what looks like a little simple button under there. So I'll just add a fill to this. Let's go with our typical orange, okay? And you know what, I'll round the corners a little bit so it looks more like a button. All right, so let's pretend we've got a nice button there and we've got some text and so they're both contained within this state button. Now this is going to be our child panel. So let's make sure that's selected and we're gonna create a new graphic style based on that and let's call it child one, just like that, okay. So now we can use this child panel option panel here. And when we bring this out, we have the graphic style. Well, we just created that, it's called child one. Then we have the parent panel to place it within. So we can place this within any of these panels. Let's go ahead and place it within panel two, just like that. And then now we have positioning options. So we can force this to stay centered perfectly. We can have it centered horizontally, vertically, top left, right, all that sort of thing. So Mainly what we're using this for is centering. So let's go just centered like that, okay. So now if you remember this last demo, it was kind of moved up to the top. It didn't stay centered very well. Let's see what we get when we preview this. Okay, so we've got the first panel. Let's go down to the second one. There, now we've got this state button in this child panel and you can see that it's centered perfectly top and bottom. And if I move the browser smaller here, it's staying perfectly centered the whole way as well. So this is a really powerful option and it allows you to create things that are a little bit more advanced like we did in this demo. Now again, with that said, you do not need to use these child panels. I can actually delete the child panel out completely or the child panel widget controller, preview this in the browser and it will still work. It just, you don't have as refined control over this. You can see that again, now it's not centered. It's not going to stay centered. So that's the presentation panels widget. I think you can see it's really powerful and really awesome. And setup wise, it's actually super easy to do. Um, again, one thing I'll stress is that the state buttons can be kind of confusing in terms of if they start pulling in your content that you've dropped. Like if I were to move this up slightly over top, it may find itself pulling into the top state button. See, now it's in the top one. So you may wanna design your whole page without any state buttons. And when you're happy with the placement of everything, put your state buttons in last, define the panel graphic styles and set it up completely. That's it. If you have any questions or concerns, please let us know. Thanks again for watching and cheers.